all Russians know chess. Can we get the first picture on? Thank you. And it was started once upon a time in India. And the inventor came to the king of India and said, I want paid for it. So he said, the king said, okay, tell me the price. Well, you put one grain on the first, sec two on the next, four on the next, eight on the next, 16 on the next, and you go on to fill the board for me. Good, the king said, I'll buy it. Wait a minute, says his advisor. That's gonna be more grain than the whole planet. Now, this is what is happening to the way we use resources and materials. Here I plotted up the use of all kinds of different metals over time on a logarithmic scale. And if we're going to use it like the way we do, we're actually gonna use more metals than the weight of this planet. Same as with a chess. It's not gonna work, I can tell you that. Let's do a simple experiment. Let's do some very quick back of the ca uh, envelope calculations, burn off time. So how much do we use today? How much do we know is there? Well, this is then an assessment of 38 different metals. You don't need to read them, it's all the metals we use. And red says we're going to run out of them very quickly. We have short runoff times, burn off times, like 10 to 20 years. Only the ones that are green uh, come to something that's sustainable. And when we look at the flow, it's business as usual, it's all red. It still doesn't start to go green until we recycle metals up to 90 or 95 percent or reduce our use of them by half or down to a quarter. And this goes through all the different metals. If you look at the, when the peak production comes, it's in the near future. It's not in my children's time, it's in my lifetime. It's going to be my problem. You see, it's all the different important metals. But it's all about energy. Now, Naki talk about how much energy we need. Well, how much do we have? Energy is like a Coca-Cola bottle when you buy it at the kiosk. It's a limited amount. And when you suck on it, in the end, you will use it all. And when the bottle is empty, it is empty. And this happens to coal, to oil, to global energy. If you look at that diagram, you can see how the blue line is the renewables, how lit it is. So how deep is the plunge? Well, let's do a very simple experiment. Look at how much of the value which will disappear if we just take away all fossil fuels. We have a large plunge in value creation from 30 to 80%. It's a huge challenge. So resource scarcity. These are huge engineering problems. On the other hand, when we made the metals, they are here. We don't really need to lose them. But it needs that we change attitude. Think about gold. We've dug up 160,000 tons of gold in the world. We still have 150,000 tons around. We lost 7% in 5,000 years. If we really want to not lose it, we can keep it. What is important is to understand where wealth comes from. Wealth arises in human system, just like in any ecosystem, by through primary production of metals, energy, and the prerequisites for food. And this creates secondary production, the creation of money and knowledge, and that goes on to tertiary production, which is about running society. And without the primary production, we actually cannot run society. We have two types of mining in our, in our century. It's mining the earth, which is primary extraction, but it's also mining the cities. For many of our metals, there are no more um, metals out in society, and this is where it's easier to find them. Now, if you can choose between a lorry of ore and a lorry of mobile phones, I will take the mobile phones. There's more gold in those than in the best ore I can buy. More ma metals have it like this. Recycling is actually a clean business, can be done very cleanly, and it's profitable. Actually, I think that in the coming century, this is gonna be one of the biggest business opportunities we have. Not only gold, silver, copper, nickel, 
iron. Iron has a burn-off time of 80 years unless we start recycling it. Then we can stretch that by a factor of 10 or 100. It's up to us to do this. Today, the world is linear. So if we keep 100 million units in the system, today we normally feed in 100 million, run it through the system, dump it out the back way, throw it on the, on the landfill, or put it in the ocean. Well, we need to make the world circular and to go away from linear. So we can keep 100 in the loop by feeding in 10 if we recycle 90. This is the challenge we have. And my, I will maintain this is a very profitable proposition to do. It's not a cost, it's an opportunity. Now it's a problem when we don't do it. But I think this is what we should turn into an opportunity. Oh, it went, went too fast. I think we have to realize that very much of our economic growth comes from um, resources today. So you can decouple to a certain point. You can decouple yourself from a food to a certain point, but you still have to have it. Same with the economy. But we can recycle, which means we can eat the same food several times. And I think we also need to remind ourselves that fossil fuels will actually end during our lifetime, so it's our problem to solve it. And we can't do it with loans. Some countries have tried that, and they're now finding out why it doesn't work. Sooner or later, payday comes. So my conclusion number one is that everything is actually at stake. If we don't do anything, we're going to run out of metals, materials. We're going to run out of phosphorus. Phosphorus has a burn-off time of 80 years. It's shorter than oil, and you can't eat anything uh, that doesn't have phosphorus. It's no substitute. Energy of all kinds is running out. Actually, agricultural land is also running out. So these are huge challenges. So it's all about the economy. Uh, let's see here. And this is going to happen now within 15 to 35 years. Russia has many great strengths. You have huge resource potential, you have huge natural reserves, you still have a lot of even fossil fuels left. You have large land area, have lots of possibilities for agricultural production. You have a small production relative to size, which means you're, you're not having more people than you can handle. You have, have enough people to do what you need to do and not too many. And you have good human resources, good education levels. But there are challenges. You actually need to take initiative. You need to take decisions. You need a plan for sustainable use of your resources. I think in Russia, recycling is going to be the biggest opportunity. Why don't we make Russia the powerhouse of resource handling in the world? It can be done. And I think here in Russia, we can do it. We have all the people we need to, to have the resources. We need to make the changes now. Big changes take time, so we need to get around and do it. There are challenges to Russian governance. Now, as a high standard as an investor, do I want to invest in Russia? There are some problems we need to fix. We need to fight corruption. We need to set the market rules properly. We need to strengthen the presence of, of sustainability. We need to improve the legal environment. If I'm going to go here with uh, my investment, I need to feel safe here. We need to create proper legislation for that. And we need a strong program to reward recycling. Thank you for listening.